All right, I hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to learn about SSR, Swalt Kit, and Firebase. So basically how to combine all that and do it. I have a quick example right here. And you can see this data, Jamie slash George. That's coming from right here, this public uh, collection, which I just named public because anyone can access it. So if you look at the rules, you can see anyone's allowed to read it. So I've got this public data being rendered. And you can see Jamie and George are right here. It's SSR because the node server that renders this page uh, actually renders Jamie and George. And I can show you that when I go to view source. So that's Jamie and George. You can see that in the source code right there. So that's all SSR really means is that the node server hydrates the HTML or creates the HTML. So we can see that happening. And we can also see an error that we're getting, and we're going to go over that in a, in a second because that's the uh, caveat. But let's kind of let's explore this. So if I look at this EMV file, we just refactored and put everything into this EMV. And I always do this for all my Firebase projects. It just cleans things up so you don't have to see a bunch of config. So I have this EMV, and this is usually where I store all my config. And then... Um, first thing I want to go over is this init Firebase and this is called um, this is the first thing that's called and notice that we're importing our config so that's the convenience right here we don't need this console.log or this debugger so we'll get rid of that but um, the important thing to note is this type of window does not equal undefined and this basically means that we're running on the browser so that's how we're checking for that and then also notice because we're on the browser, we're importing from app slash fi Firebase slash app. And we're also importing Firebase slash off and Firestore. So we're importing all these individually and then we're <coughs> initializing the app. Now on the node server, which is where this would run, we're just importing straight from Firebase. Let me get rid of this console.log and we're initializing the app. And also notice that uh, we're checking the length of the app or the number of apps because you can initialize more than one app So that's our way of making sure that this hasn't been done more than once um, We don't really need that, but that's a nice little check you can put in Okay, so we have that initialize function and that is being called in our layout folder layout uh, Swelt file which is basically running all of this so um, and I can show you that so if I take out if I just add an h1 hello you'll see that right there okay so this is like our layout container so let's review this so this right here this context slash module allows uh, stuff to be ran on the server so this will be ran on the server itself but it'll also be run on the client so I can show you that so if I do a console.log here and I say should run on both you'll see that in action so this async load you have to export this function and it'll it should run on both so let's see if we go here and I refresh you can see it says should run on both here hopefully with any luck we'll see it uh, oops wrong one we'll see it right here as well should run on both so you can see that right there it's a little hard to see but it's basically running on the node server and on the uh, thing. And we're just using this to uh, initialize Firebase. These props, we'll go over them a little bit later, but you can, this is how you would pass the data into the uh, component that you're hydrating. So that's looking good. Uh, the next thing, once we have it initialized, and we're initializing it here just so that we know it's being initialized in one place, it just simplifies everything. We can go and look at our uh, Firestore. And this is where we're getting Firestore. So we save it to a DB just uh, so we don't create it over and over again. So that's all that DB is and set to null. So if it's there, just go ahead and return it. This is the same check <clears throat> to make sure that we're running on the client. Notice that we're only importing this. We're not importing Firestore because we did that in the init and we just do an fb.firestore so it's pretty uh, just like a normal firestore so it's pretty much the same and then this is uh, pretty much the same as well the big difference is that we're importing all of firebase 
and then we're um, calling the fire dot fire store. Okay, so now that we know that, we can go into our index. We can look at this. So same thing here. Context. This will load on the thing. We get our database. We get our public collection. Um, once we have our public collection, we loop through all the docs and then we get the data. Now, obviously, if you had a thousand docs, you wouldn't want to do this. Um, but because we only have one, we're not too concerned about it. But there is a caveat with this, right? And that is the private data fails. Even though we're logged in, we see this log out button. We know we're logged in and it fails. And the reason it fails is that there's no way for the node server to know if the user's logged in because Firebase is controlling the auth. Now you can get around that by using Firebase admin and sending a token and doing all that stuff, but it's a little bit of work. And the reason that we're getting this error is that on the private collection, if you go back to rules, you might have seen this. I am only allowing authenticated users users to view this. So if I went and I did this and I said publish, we'll see how fast Firebase is, and I refresh, I might not be getting that error anymore. Let me go ahead and uh, restart the server. And we'll make this a little bit bigger because we can see the error on our node server. Okay. And I don't think I'm getting that error. Yeah. But if I were to go back here and change it back and publish and then go here, you can see I am getting the permission denied error on the node server. And that's another good reminder about why it's important to wrap all these things and try catches. I'm not always the best at it, but um, you definitely want to do that. So I think a few good takeaways from this is that SSR for public collections is pretty straightforward. SSR for private collections, you're going to have to use the admin, and it's going to be a little bit of work. The other thing I forgot to go over is this props, and this is basically where that public data comes from. So if you look at this export let public data, that's basically where that is. Public data is basically that. So you can pass in props that come from the server into the uh, client. So this is how you um, hydrate the data basically from the server. So yeah, so that is uh, Firebase SSR in a nutshell. It's pretty cool. Um, we're not going to use it for this project, so this is a little bit of a detour, but I got a request from a uh, subscriber to do this. Um, if you like this style of video, let me know. Also, if you want to do a talk at the Swelt, uh, Bay Area Swelt Meetup, we would love to have you. We're always looking for speakers. Any experience level, any project, anything you want to demo is always welcome, and I hope you all have a great day.